Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Very good. Very, very good. I'm, I'm really glad to see you all here. And we are gathered here to worship God, um, to, to share the love of God that has poured upon us. And, and also, we're going to share that love with all the fellow Christians here and beyond this building. So welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ. And it is a day we celebrate our gathering and we celebrate the love and grace that we have experienced and celebrate the opportunity to share the love with one another. So again, welcome and let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you that you give us this precious day. We come to your presence asking your blessings and asking your strength and your, your comfort and your healing so that, Lord, we can continue to live and love with your guidance and under your grace and mercy. So, Lord, bless us and be with us so that we can worship you with all our heart and mind. We thank you, Lord, that you are our God. And we pray all these in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I have a couple of announcements, and this beautiful altar flower is given to the glory of God in memory of Myra Reed and by Dave Reed. And let's continue to keep Dave and his family in your prayers. Monday, although it's Labor Day, uh, there's no labor in the church. So uh, the church office will be closed, and no food pantry running this Monday. And Tuesday, I think the sewing club uh, will be on one at the um, food pantry and slash sewing room. It's a Tuesday you're going to meet on. And choir will resume their rehearsal on Thursday at 7 p.m. at our choir practice room. And Saturday, uh, thrift store is running. Uh, 10 to 1, and next Sunday, uh, we're having worship back into the sanctuary, so uh, don't, be, don't be confused, we're going to have worship in the sanctuary and pray for not too hot weather. And our church conference will be on October 5th, uh, 9 a.m., and in Sparta, UMC, it's in person for our church. So if you are church leaders and, and your church members who, and are interested in what's going on and what we're going to celebrate and what you're going to do like for next year. Um, so if you want to know church in general, please come this day uh, to Sparta by 9, 9 a.m. It's going to be a great uh, opportunity and worship time too. And our church conference, it's uh, that uh, for our church conference, um, we collect some church reports. I know both, all of you uh, post, upload your, your report on the arena, but the church office still need your um, paper copy to make a conference booklet. So if you were to do that, uh, please do so by uh, September 13th. Okay, that's all I have. Is there any other announcement to be made? If not, please stand if you are able and willing, and I invite you to call to worship. Hear the voice of the Lord, who calls us from our places of need. We come before you, O God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We acknowledge God has promised to lead us into a land flowing with milk and honey. With grateful hearts, we gather for worship our God today. Blessed be the Lord our God, now and forever. Amen. The opening hymn is from our hymn at page 176. Majesty, worship His Majesty. Majesty, worship. 
children's message. Would you please come or yeah. Okay. You wanna sit down? You need a chair. Oh. How are you? Good? You sure? You sure? Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it is Sunday, right? So Sunday, you know, I don't know if you are familiar with this, but I mean, we used to say, I think we're still saying, you know, it's a day of no work. Have you heard about that? What does that mean to you? No work. Do nothing? Nothing. <laughs> but you're doing something. You come to church. Is that work? Yeah. Why do you work? You come up here, is that work? No? What's that then? <laughs> it's just coming up. <laughs> so, hey, you know, but what about this? It's uh, uh, supposed to be a day of no work, right? But we see so many people at work, like firefighters, right? Police officers, right? Soldiers? And maybe doctors, nurses, who else? Your pastor, you know? That's, so how come they work it's a, on the day of no work? So maybe, you know, that's for church or for people for an, uh, in the case of emergency or to protect people like police officers soldiers have you thought of imagine this police officer like you know i mean he sees somebody do something really bad oh it is sunday day of no work so i am not gonna catch him or her right is that right does that sound right because okay so somebody maybe somebody tried to you know set fire on church building oh it's a sunday so i'm gonna report this to tomorrow to the police office because the day of no work so we shouldn't do that you know, it's a, it's not just. Um, although we call it, you know, you, you you don't do any work on Sunday. Maybe some people are doing some work. Why? No matter. Why? Maybe to help others, right? So that they don't have to work. So Sunday or Sabbath day, you know some. In, in Jewish tradition, it's not, you know, 
day of no work does not mean day of doing nothing. So no homework, you know, no do nothing, do nothing. But maybe you know, I mean, you don't do something just you know, I mean, just for yourself on this day. You know, I mean, just to for your fun, which is you know, I mean, I love to do. And but also think about other people, right? So then maybe so that they can be they can rest. They so they don't have to do some work. So it's a day of no work. But not just for us, for all other people too, right? So I'm saying it's a day of kind of doing some thing out of love for others, or out of compassion, or out of your commitment, like police officers or doctors, nurses, right? So maybe so that all other people can have chance to give thanks or be thankful, okay? So what well, kind of think about it, well, it's a day of no work and what does that mean actually? Okay, let us pray. Dear loving and gracious God, we come to church on Sundays. We know this is a day of no work, but we constantly do something, but not just for us, but for but also for all other people so that they can be thankful and they can know that God, you give us a rest, a day of rest. Be with us, Lord, and we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may go now. Thank you. say to them, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have given heed to you to what has been done to you in Egypt. I declare that I will bring you up out of the misery of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to your voice, and you and the elders of Israel shall go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us now go a three days journey into the wilderness, so that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our gospel lesson is from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 2 through 3 and 8. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. the Lord. Okay, would you like to stretch your arms like that? Stretch and relax. Okay? 
um, don't hit, you know, <laughs> no violence. Uh, let's say one another, um, I'm so glad you're here. So glad you're here. Okay, um, this last month we think we had time to think about you know the worship, and this month I think we'll go uh, just to think more about uh, Sabbath day or rest. So month of September we're thinking about this keeping the Sabbath day holy, um, maybe for five Sundays. Uh, so. Today, you know, uh, it's a like first kind of introductory day of you know what it means to keep the Sabbath day holy. Keep the keep the Sabbath day holy. You know, we know this, and this is the fourth commandment, very familiar one, right? We all know this, and we quote quoted often, like saying, you know, it's a day of rest, day of no work. And we believe we all know it very well, but however, it is the one commandment that most of us have misinterpreted easily. So when it, when it comes to keeping the Sabbath day holy, what comes to your mind first? No work, right? No work. Or or you, you shouldn't do such and such. Like on Sundays, usually, I mean, I was not allowed to buy ice cream. Sunday, no. No. And any kind of exciting and like, you know, fun activities on Sundays, no. I always need to um, attend kind of boring worship service, you know. And Sundays, you know, that you have to attend uh, by my parents. So for me personally, it's more like day of restraint or, or um, prohibition. You don't do this, you don't do that, and you don't do such and such. And you no know, dancing or, or no kind of um, secular music, you know, you're, you're not going to enjoy that, right? And you know, no, you, you're not going to a dance party, you know, on Sundays. Maybe you don't play uh, some sports on Sundays. I'm not talking about these days, like you know, years ago. Uh, that's how we remember this Sabbath day. So actually, it is supposed to be a day of rest, but we recognize it as a day of prohibition, day of restraint. Do you, you don't do anything else but you come to church and attend the church worship service. Am I right? Does it sound right for keeping the Sabbath day? Okay. And we see this uh, kind of how, how Jewish people observe the Sabbath day, which is uh, from Friday evening to Saturday evening. Um, if you live in near a Jewish community, um, you may see dozens of people walking along the road to their synagogue on Friday evening. They don't drive on Friday evening. Um, no driving or no turning on the light. From Friday evening to Saturday evening, you, you are not allowed to open your door, the, the door to your refrigerator because when you open it, the light pops up, that's work. You don't, you don't push the button on your elevator. So when you, when you go to like the Jewish community, I mean, all the elevators for, elevators for Sabbath, it's all pushed on automatically. So you do stop every floor so you don't have to work. That's work. Jewish people are not the only people who observe Sabbath day. And we Christians are to observe Sabbath day as well but it's on, the, it's on Sundays, right? So when I was young, I, I would say, you know, I mean, there are some couple of things, not a couple of things, a lot of things, you know, I'm, I'm not allowed to. Um, and so somehow to us keeping Sabbath day holy has given a negative impression. It might be a day of kind of oppression. 
I can do this, I cannot do this, I shouldn't do that, I'm not supposed to do this. But you know, don't don't get surprised. You know, it is not a considered um, the Sabbath day. It is not a considered. It has not been considered as an affirmative declaration of declaration of faith or our identity. But don't get surprised. In Exodus chapter two, twenty verse eight, in which we find the first reference to Sabbath day keeping, we read that. You shall do any work. You shall not do any work. It's a day of no work, you know, not prohibition or not restraint. There's nothing like no shopping, no buying ice cream, no baseball game, or no basketball game, or no dancing, or anything like that. Just say, you shall do no work. What does it mean then? To keep the Sabbath day holy. To see this, we should know the foundation of the Sabbath day keeping. You know, in Genesis chapter two, verse two, we read, "On the seventh day, God finished all the work that He had done, and He rested on the seventh day from all the work He had done." And God, who rested, commanded that God's people should do no work. On the Sabbath day, in Exodus chapter twenty, verse ten, so doing no work is observed in honor of the God who rests, and it considers the situation of Israel people in Egypt. You know these people. In Exodus chapter three, verse seven to eight, we read that God knows the misery. And suffering of the Israel people in Egypt under the regime of the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh represented the Egyptians and the culture of Egypt that oppresses and manipulated the Israel people with forced and unceasing labor, work, and work, and more and harder. Pharaoh made the lives of Israel bitter with labor and treating them as slaves. People, you have no time for rest. Continue to work. Work will give you happiness. Work will give you safety. Work will guarantee your happiness. So work harder and more to be more and to be more productive. Produce more. Even under the really uh, inclement circumstances, Clem produce more, and the pharaoh wanted to use their cheap labor to build his storage houses, so that he could store more commodity in them. So you gotta work more, so so that I I can accumulate, I can store more, and you gotta work more, and you gotta work unceasingly. Then you will avoid any trouble in your life. So work more, work continuously. Under the slogan of work more and produce more, the Israel people were forced to work more so that the Pharaoh could save more. And there was an atmosphere, not enough. What you have done is not enough. What I have is not enough. So do more. Save more, right? Work continuously. You are not worth to resting, so work more. Resting means, according to Pharaoh, laziness. Laziness. Resting is evil, as he tried to manipulate Moses and Aaron and all Israel people in Exodus chapter five, <laughs> verse eight. You are lazy and you are evil, so that's why you keep asking me to to let you go and you know have time to worship God in the wilderness. Under Pharaoh's reign, the Israelites had to prove their worth through work or productivity through ceaseless work. They were compelled to constantly compete with one another for more produce and neglect. Their relationship with God. So Israel people, when they were in Egypt under these circumstances, you gotta work more. Thinking about resting, 
it's evil, it's sin, it's totally going against the culture, the system in this country that is Egypt. However, the God who rests delivered them from the land of this slavery, like work more, and granted them rest through this fourth commandment. This indicates that God is merciful and loving and, that the, and does not demand ceaseless work and more commodities from his people, but instead offers rest. Good enough. Rest. Take a break. Which allows them to be free from the oppressive, coercive, coercive and relationship-breaking work system, culture, and religions. The God who rests is unlike all the gods of Egypt or surrounding countries that the Israel people have known previously. In Egypt, the people only knew the God you know, who, who asked more, bring me something, bring more commodities, you know, bring more of yours. But God does not treat his people as slaves, but as the free people who know how to rest. The God who rests is a God of mercy, steadfast love, and faithfulness who is committed to covenantal relationships of fidelity or faithfulness. So God didn't say, you know, bring me something. But always say, you know, stay with me, stay in good relationship with me. Keep your faith in me. I will bless you. God is faithful to this covenant. And God is not the God you know, who demands, hey, you need to do more, and you need to bring more, you need to store more to guarantee your safety. So, you know, keep the Sabbath day holy means, you know, at least a day of the week, you know, maybe do no work, just to have more for you, or to store more for you, you know I mean, just for, you, you, you go higher, and you, you go like, you know, over all other people, maybe stop such work, but think about our relationship with God, and with other people, and we ourselves. Take time to examine yourself and examine your relationship with God and examine your relationship with your neighbors and, and do something maybe, not just work, to have more, but do something to enhance those relationships with God, with others, and with yourself. You know, when my children were younger, you know, I mean, they were like, you know, complain a lot about their weekly schedule. Monday through Friday, they go to school. And Saturday, you know, they do go to like, you know, Korean school to learn Korean. And Sunday, church. So they complain about, you know, their schedule to us like, Dad, when is our Sabbath day? You have your Sabbath day, but when is our Sabbath day? But I mean, maybe we just keep out of our desire, okay, you need, to, you need to be very good, and you need to kind of get a better grade, and you need to maybe be more successful, so do this and do that. I mean, maybe you can just, you know, defer your rest until your retirement. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, that's kind of our mentality. I mean, you gotta, you gotta have more you know, to secure your life after retirement, right? Have more pension, right? Save more money and work harder, work longer, so that you will be okay, or you will be in, in safe, you will have in safe retirement. Do more for yourself. Not just our kids, I mean, some kids, they go to school, they go to like after school program, they go to sports activities, 
and Sunday, some another sports activities, keep just doing it. So when is there Sabbath day? When is the time when they can or, or we can you know, have time to reflect on our relationship? But we just kind of focus on you know, just doing more and having more, acquire more, or be, to be more successful. Think about it. Reflect on our lives. Are we living in Egypt or are we living? Are we, are we just you know moving forward to the promised land? Keeps telling us, hey, we need to move. We are not good enough. So we need to do more. Do something more. For me, for us, not for others. Have more and go higher and save more. God says. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Rest. Take a break. You are good enough. You are worth enough. You are valuable enough. You don't have to work ceaselessly. ceaselessly. You don't have to store more and more. Do not ruin yourself. Do not break your relationship with others. Just focus, and while you are just focus on just doing more and work more, working more. So keeping the Sabbath day holy, it is not a call for call for prohibition or restraint. It is a call for call to choose between the gods of Egypt represented by Pharaoh. You are not good enough. Work more. Do more. And the God who rests, keep the Sabbath day holy, and you shall do no work. It is a call to choose between these two gods. Who do you want to follow and worship? A God who forces you to work more and harder and to stay in endless competition I need to go higher than that person. I need to have more than that per more be Susan or Tom. I need to be more successful than maybe Jane or Betty or Dave. And and thus the break your relationship. Oh, you are not my neighbor. You you are my opponents. You are my rival, or you are my enemy that I need to defeat. That's the mentality of do more and work more and work without ceasing. Or the God who rests, the one who saves you from slavery, the one who is with you whether you are productive or not. Keep the Sabbath day holy. The choice is yours. But make a wise decision. Maybe this choose the one that will give you rest and in turn life. We shouldn't forget this that the rest is a final marking of creator and creation. When God finished all his work, God rested. I often imagine what it was like the first day of human, humans in God's creation. After God created the humans in his image on the sixth day, and then the seventh day, God rested. So humans began with their first day with rest in God. That's, that's our life. Our goal should maybe should be resting in God and in peace. So keeping the Sabbath day holy is to declare to whom we belong, whom we worship. We, we, wor we belong to God who rests. We belong to the God who, who is the creator and the source of all power and life not the Pharaoh who forced us to work more, 
who, who always manipulated us, you are not good enough. Keeping the Sabbath day holy means to declare our identity as God's people. Are you the people of God or are you the people of Pharaoh? Yeah, somehow it's not, it doesn't sound really right because, I mean, pastor, you, you, do you not know this world? You know, if you don't work constantly, you're going to be in trouble. You're not gonna. You're not gonna pay your bill. You're not gonna secure your house, your job, or you're not gonna secure your family. Yes, that's right. But that doesn't mean you. You have to work more. I mean, have more. You have to be always better than other people. <coughs> or somehow, if we have to see, you know, if our focus is on to have more, on having more. Or going above all other people. How do we have that kind of mentality? That kind, that kind of thought or perspective, you know, to maybe other people. So I have to have more than you do. I have to be more successful than you are. I have to get better grade than you do. So if when I see if I can, maybe I'm gonna. I'm considering to get rid of you. Is that things, are these the things that are happening around the, the world? So keeping the Sabbath day holy or, or rest means, you know, we, we think about or we, the God, you know, who rests. We worship the God who, who rests who brought us out of the land of slavery. Do you like to go back to the land of slavery? Or do you, are you moving forward toward the land flowing with milk and honey? It is a call for liberation. It is a call for freedom. So when, you, when it comes to the Sabbath day, we shouldn't think this, consider it as kind of, we sh you, you don't do this. We kind of use Sabbath day to oppress other people. Hey, kid, you know, you, you're not going to have fun on Sunday. Hey, people, you don't do such fun things on Sundays because it's a day of prohibition while God just declared it a day of liberation and celebration. So remember this. Sabbath day is a day of freedom and keep it holy. Reflect on your relationship with God, with other people, and with others. And from this Sunday on, and then how do we apply or reflect on this Sabbath day? Not just that would apply, you know, not just for us, but also for other people. So brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, Lord, we come to your presence with the hope to leave the world of competition, world, world of hatred, and world of endless work to justify our hatred and our hostility. So Lord, when you come to your presence, please embrace us and strengthen us so that we know how to rest in you as the first human beings did in your grace and love. Be with us, Lord, and we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The hymn of reflection is from the faith we sing. This one, page 2120.
And the day after tomorrow is a Carrie Carol Doherty's birthday. And yes, oh, Lena Christ's birthday too. Oh, okay, it's three people. Okay, shall we? Can you raise your hands so that we know? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Anymore. This time I lift up our prayers and concerns. Pray for Gary, Darlene, and Dave Reed and family, Kit Tallinn and Ruth, uh, Prior family, and Annie. And also uh, pray for a successful grand opening for uh, someone's daughter. Dance studio, dance studio, and pray for Nancy, Liz, and Karen, and Sharon and Vern, Vernon, and pray for Robert, Carol, and today's Nina's birthday, <laughs> and also Brenda, Gail, Jim, and then Jonathan, Eddie, Jenny, pray for Avery, and pray for Bert, uh, pray for Bill and. Safe travel mercies uh, for Carol and Candy and my wife, and also for Darren, Jordan, and Brody. Uh, pray for Navarrete's fam Lopez family and Herminia de Jesus and Cruz Santa Diaz and Baltazar Lopez, Eric B, Keith, Sean, and Francis. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your grace and love. We have people who have been sick, and we have people who need your healing and your strength. So Lord, pour upon them your, your healing so that they will get better and, and be more active. Also, Lord, we ask your continuing blessings for those who have birthdays this week. And as you have blessed them, continue to bless them and make them blessings so that wherever they go, they will shine as your blessing so that people see there is God. And also, Lord, we ask your continuing blessings for our church so that we can grow our loving influence on the people in our community and beyond our local community. Also, Lord, we ask your peace among us and around the world so that we, we stop hating each other but instead love one another and care about one another in, in your, with your love. 
be with us, Lord, and we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray. So we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now it is a time for us to give thanks to God through our giving. Mm -hmm. taken baby steps toward the life you've called us to live. May we grow in our giving, but even more in our loving. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who gave in enduring love all there was to give for us. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, with a humble heart, we come to your presence, Lord, and we are about to take this, your body and blood for us. Before we take this, Lord, purify us and cleanse us so that we will take this in thanksgiving and confidence. Lord, be with us, and we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and love, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son and the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you for many and for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on this gift of bread and grape juice. Make them before us the body of blood of Christ, that we may before the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one in ministry to all, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in his final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet, through your Son, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Because there is one love, we who are many are one, for we all partake of the one love. The bread which you break is a sharing in the body of Christ. This cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. So now the table is ready and you are welcome to take this in thanksgiving. Again, you don't have to be our church members and you don't have to be Methodist or Presbyterian or any, don't, don't, you don't have to belong to any Protestant tradition, whether you're Catholic or, or some, something else, you are welcome as long as you believe and accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. So please come and you know how we, it goes. So I'm gonna go with the people on my right side, and then the table number one, two, three, four, like this. So you come to this way and take the bread, eat, take the cup, drink, and you go. And if you wanna stand, stay, then you can come to the front and take time to pray, and you, you may dispose your cup, the trash on my left. 
easy. And I invite you, um, Mitch first. Body of Christ broken for you. 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 Body of Christ broken for you.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. If you're able and willing, I invite you to our closing hymn, Trust and Obey, in our hymnal page 467. <coughs> privileged with the help of our God and the Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit who will be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.